ladies and gentlemen, this is George Kamiti. Welcome back to our channel. Today we are um, going to derive the Rankine's formula. Uh, we are still dealing with quorums and structs. And um, in the derivation of the Rankine's formula, the Rankine's formula is given as follows. 1 over P being equal to 1 over PC plus 1 over PE. Why about it? P, this P on the left hand side of the equal sign, that is the crippling load by the Rankine formula. PC, that is the crushing load, which is given by uh, ultimate crushing stress multiplied by cross sectional area of the member. This um, crushing load, we are getting it from. Uh, Remember simple stresses and strains, whereby stress is given by load divided by cross-sectional area of a member. So when you make P the subject, that is the load, you get a stress multiplied by cross-sectional area, and that is what we got here. A PE, that is the crippling load by Euler's formula. We have already covered problems dealing with the Euler's formula. So if you haven't watched the videos, they are already on our channel. The Euler's crippling load is given by this formula. A pi squared EI divided by LE squared, where E is the Young's modulus of elasticity. I, on the other hand, is the moment of inertia. LE is the effective length. So, coming back here, the Rankine's formula. So, we are going to have the 1 over P being equal to 1 over PC. That is the crushing load plus 1 over PE. That is the uh, Euler's formula, Euler's crippling load. Um, when we add this to PC plus PE, 1 over PC plus 1 over PE, the LCM is going to be PC, PE. PC, PE divided by PC, we are going to remain with PE plus PC, PE divided by PE, that is going to be PC. So we are going to have 1 over PE is equal to PE plus PC divided by PCPE. The reciprocal of uh, 1 over P is P. So when we write the reciprocal of uh, 1 over P on the right hand side of the equal side, we are also going to have the reciprocal of what we got on the right hand side. Therefore, the reciprocal of 1 over P, that is P, giving us this reciprocal uh, being PCPE divided by PE plus PC. Then from there, we are going to divide, therefore dividing the numerator, and in this case on the right hand side, and the denominator and the denominator by PE. So this is what we are going to have. We are going to have P is equal to PC times PE. We divide by PE. So that is dividing the numerator by PE all over PE plus PC, PE plus PC, we divide this as well by PE. So that is dividing the denominator by PE. Uh, we are going to end up having this. P is equals, this PE and this one are going to cancel out. So we are going to have PC all over. Uh, here we are going to have PE over PE plus PC divided by PE. So these two are going to cancel out and we are going to remain with P is equals P 
PC, divide this by 1 plus PC all over PE. Then from there, when we are go uh, what we are going to do, we are going to substitute PC with crushing load times cross-sectional area. And we are also going to substitute PE, that is the crippling load by Euler's formula, with this formula here. And this is going to lead us to P being equal to PC is a ultimate crushing stress. Ultimate crushing stress multiplied by cross-sectional area of the member. We divide this by 1 plus. Here we got another PC. That is the ultimate a crushing stress multiplied by cross sectional area divide this by PE the Euler's crippling load which is given by pi squared EI divide this by the square of the effective length so we are going to have this P is equal to uh, the crushing stress times cross sectional area Divide this by 1 plus stress times area times L e squared divided by pi squared e i. Uh, we know this i is the moment of inertia and when it is given in terms of the risk radius of gyration we usually have this relation the moment of inertia is equal to a k squared, where k is the least radius, the least radius of gyration, least radius of gyration. So the moment of inertia in terms of the radius of gyration is given by a k squared. A is the cross-sectional area of the member. Therefore, when we substitute this moment of inertia at this point, we are going to have P, that is the crippling load by Rankine, by Rankine formula being equal to stress multiplied by cross-sectional area, divide this by 1 plus a stress times area times the square of the effective length Divide by pi squared multiplied by the Young's modulus of elasticity. I is a k squared. A k squared. This a and this one are going to cancel out, and that means that our crippling load by Rankine will be given by stress times cross section or area divided by one plus. Stress divided by pi squared times the Young's modulus of elasticity into, we are going to write the Re and the K into bracket because both of them are squared. Le, the effective length, divided by least radius of generation and both of them R squared and this part here that is the stress divided by pi squared e is denoted by a constant a so this a since the Rankine's formula is a, an empirical formula the value of a is taken from uh, results of the experiments and it does not uh, depend or it is not calculated from the results of the stress and the Young's modulus of elasticity. So this one is uh, usually found after carrying out experiments on various materials. So when we substitute this part with A, our Rankine's formula, that is P Rankine, the crippling load 
will be given by stress multiplied by cross sectional area divided by 1 plus A, which is a constant, multiplied by LE divided by K and both of them being squared. So this is what we call the crippling load by Rankine formula or in other words this is what we call the Rankine formula. So we are going to apply this uh, formula to solve various problems in our next videos. Thank you very much for watching our video. Please keep subscribing, keep sharing, keep liking, commenting and we are going to appreciate so very much. Thank you. Let's meet in yet another lesson and see how we apply the Rankine's formula.